What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Looks like LeBron James is excited to have Darvin Ham as the new head coach. And out of the three candidates, he was definitely the best one. I don't give a damn about uh, Scott Atkinson, Kenny Atkinson, or um, Terry Stotts. Both of them are losers to me, if you ask me. Uh, Darvin Ham doesn't have a resume, so we can't say whether he's a loser or a winner. But at the same time, I would say more of a winner, simply because him being on the uh, Milwaukee Bucks and serving uh, as true to one of the mentors to Giannis and Middleton and the rest of the crew on there, he definitely helped Giannis' development as a player and, you know, his um, professionalism and how he goes about doing his business on the floor. He definitely helped him out in a good way. So I definitely would say that, um, you know, his resume is speaking pretty loud in regards to how he can, you know, get to players and say the right things and push the right buttons to get the best out of them. You know, it might be another Ty Lue type situation who on the Clippers. But of course, we have to see this is his first coaching job, actual coaching job. He was an assistant coach before on the Milwaukee Bucks won a championship with them so he definitely has championship dna experience and mental to bring to this team and definitely can instill that in the players that's on the lakers currently which most of them on the lakers uh i can say most but a lot of them on the lakers don't have a championship so um definitely could bring his wisdom and everything there and i definitely see darvin ham as a type of coach that'll get in your face and let you know whether you're doing something right or wrong and he's definitely a motivational type coach i've seen him on the sidelines with milwaukee and pushed those players you know um said things with passion and got those players to play a little bit better and probably press the right buttons as i said to got them to play better than what they thought they could when they won the championship uh just a year a year ago basically and um hey you know definitely got landed itself an opportunity with the lakers and like like I said, if LeBron approves of it, then you're definitely in good hands, you know, at least with the organization standpoint. And I'm pretty sure LeBron had a say so in regards to him getting hired as well. So that definitely, uh, you know, makes the situation a little bit easier, you know, for uh, Darvin Ham to, you know, come into the situation there, especially being liked by the number one guy, the best player on the team. And um, like I said, hopefully, you know, for the Lakers, it goes up from here. I don't think they're going to be much better. I think they'll be a little bit better. I think they'll at least make the playing tournament or playoffs. I think first round knockout is pretty much where I'm seeing, you know, their future go because I don't think Darvin Ham is the end all be all. They do, they still need defense. They still need to understand how to play situational basketball. LeBron needs to be a number two, not a number one because he can't carry a team anymore. Anthony Davis needs to stay healthy and Russell Westbrook needs to either take a hike or take some lessons on how to actually keep the ball from being turned over so much. And that's just pretty much where they are as a team, as a unit. And then, like I said, the extra additives, like you got Carmelo Anthony and players like that. Either they need to get rid of him or certain ones like that who can't cut it, or they need to figure out a way to make them, you know, um, valuable while they're winning, not him having him put up points off the bench and they're still losing because it really, it really doesn't matter if that's happening. So um, same as it goes for any other player. But um I definitely think Darvin Ham will have a, be a, definitely have a good voice in the locker room, definitely be able to uh, push some players to play a little bit more with an edge. And um, he definitely won't tolerate any lack of consistency on um, offense or defense when it comes to effort. And I said last year, you know, one thing I looked at the Lakers and saw that was one of their biggest issues that I really noticed every game that I watched was their effort. They wasn't there mentally to, you know, go out there and die for loose balls, you know, do the little things that can help you win. And I definitely think Darvin Ham will push this or pull this out of them. And I definitely hope that he does because it's just embarrassing not to see the Lakers even make the play in tournament when they're actually good enough to do that. And, and really, you know, having three top 75 players, you should be good enough to actually make the playoffs. Damn the play in tournament. You should be able to take it a step further. The reason why it was okay for the Clippers to make the play in tournament because they had neither one of their superstars and they nearly almost landed a six seed spot earlier that season or later in the season when, you know, they beat Denver were coming back down from 25 points against them and got on a little winning streak they almost had a chance to hit the six seed so you know what they did was overly impressive by you know by committee and what they had but the lakers for the most part you had two superstars on the floor predominantly mostly all season so there's really no reason why the lakers should have faltered and not even made it to the playing tournament and hopefully darvaham can change that but you know there are some people and i've read some sites also where this could be another situation of a luke walton type 
situation. Luke Walton came in the same way, not much experience to no experience at all. You know, having a team like the Lakers and he had a lot of pressure on him to basically help them win because uh, he won championships, I think, as a player. But uh, as a coach, it just didn't work out, you know, and um, this could be another reenactment of that. And I think uh, reading that site and listening to some of that insight on there was definitely uh, formidable because I can remember um, Luke Walton, his issues, and we all know how that went. But at the same time, hopefully Darvin Ham's, you know, outcome is a little bit different. Hopefully he can at least will this team to the playing tournament because if he does that, then they have to definitely look at keeping him because he already upgraded the team from where they were last year or this past year going into next season where hopefully they at least make the playing tournament and be a team formidable to actually get there and give themselves a chance to win. You know what I'm saying? If you don't give yourself a chance to win, that's when it's a problem, you know, so um, hopefully he can do that. I don't really expect much. I don't expect championship. I think, you know, LeBron's A is going to show a little bit more. I think Anthony Davis is going to be just as injury prone as he was last year, just as he was in New Orleans. If you ask me, he's always been injury prone to me. Uh, he had one little good run in the bubble, but he had four months off to rest his broken body. And, you know, LeBron, you know, was motivated as well. You know, with Kobe passing and everything, they had all the motivation in the world to win it. You see what I'm saying? But other than that, now all that's pretty much over and then dwindled down. What have they done since? They haven't been nowhere near the team they looked like in the bubble. And of course, they let go of some pieces that were very valuable to them. I thought Rondo was good with them. I thought uh, Alex Caruso was good with them. I thought KCP was good. Plus, they had Danny Green knocking down big shots in the corner and plus playing defense. So when you lose those type of players who built, who were in the culture and who fit the culture the way it was with Frankie V, who was the coach, might, might I add, and won a championship, now they're pretty much, you know, got all these other players but the chemistry isn't there and see that's where I think that rebuilding like James Worthy said is a good thing because if you got a bunch of guys in there who really don't fit and don't have no chemistry well that's no different than having a bunch of young players with no chemistry who don't fit yet or maybe or maybe haven't even developed yet to start to be the player they can be so you're still losing you're still not winning so it's like even though you may not want to rebuild like LeBron James always mentions but having a team with a bunch of players with big names and you're not winning that's not too much different than you know uh rebuilding but with all that being said, we got to see how it works out for them. Um, if they don't make the playoffs, I wouldn't be surprised as well. Uh, once again, because like I said, the roster really isn't changing. Uh, not much, especially now with the core three guys. And uh, we'll see what additions they actually add to the roster and see if it makes them a little bit better. But I'm not sure how much additions they can add. They definitely don't look like they're going to get rid of Russell Westbrook anytime soon. So, I mean, that's a problem all on its own. And like I said, Darvin Ham, uh, you know, he's, he's you know, he has a tough job in front of him and this job right here can definitely make him want to quit being a coach maybe go back and be an assistant coach once he uh, coaches the lakers for a while but we'll see what happens and how it pans out and uh we'll see what their season ends up like after um the end of next season but hey that's my take on everything leave any comments in the comment section check out my other videos as always and hey kelly out